Welcome to a very spooky episode of Rental Regrets. <laughs> Happy Friday the 13th, everyone. You're watching Rental Regrets. And because it's Friday the 13th, I thought it was the most appropriate time to look at the video game Friday the 13th, based on the movie Friday the 13th. <laughs> uh, developed by Atlas and published by LJN and released in the United States in February of 1989. So if you ask people what a good list of the most difficult NES games of all time include... This game usually goes somewhere up there on the uh, near the very top of the list. Uh, unfortunately, because the instruction manual was a little bit too obtuse in explaining exactly how some of the mechanics of the game worked, a lot of people probably did the same thing. They would wander around the map rather aimlessly, trying to go cabin to cabin, trying to save counselors or the kids, run into Jason, fail miserably trying to defeat him in order to save the counselor, and just kind of give up in frustration. I count myself as one of those people. This is one of those games, full disclosure, that I have never, ever beaten. Uh, frankly, it was something that I played, I think, maybe once at a friend's house and just found it a little bit too obtuse and just was turned off by the game. So what I thought we would do today, and I'm going to give myself a couple of tries to get this right, and then we'll probably call today if I can't actually make any serious progress. I pulled up a strategy guide that boils down the most simplistic path to getting the best weapon in the game for fighting Jason. Uh, technically, it's not the strongest weapon in the game. However, it is considered the best one just for causing damage to Jason exclusively, and that is the torch. So it's a very simple, like, eight-step process for getting the torch very quickly in the game. They do tell you that you should probably focus on getting one person equipped before you worry about saving any of the other characters, uh, the counselors, or trying to save the children. Whether or not that's a good strategy, I guess we'll find out. I've, frankly, I don't know. I've, I've never beaten a game, so we'll see if this is the key to uh, making serious progress for the first time ever. Now, there are two counselors in the game that are considered the A1 top tier characters. They are Mark with the diamond head, uh, di diamond shaped head, and Chrissy with the massive amount of hair. We're going to start with Mark. Hopefully, he will have what it takes to get all of the uh, necessary equipment to get the torch and not have to worry about Chrissy being hunted and killed. Chrissy is very close to where we kind of need to go already in the game. However, we will use Mark because he's a little bit further away. He can pick up some of the items that you have to find in order to get the torch. Key among those is you have to get a lighter, a knife, and then make your way to a cabin that is in the inner ring surrounding the lake itself. If you get those items, you can go to a certain cabin that's on the northern side of the lake, find a note that tells you to go into the woods. You have to get a key... A key is necessary to open a door in a cabin in the woods. Once you have the key, go to the cabin. Inside is a note that tells you basically Jason is weak to fire. Leave that cabin, go back to the northern cabin on the inner ring around the, the lake, and you should find the torch there. Again, I don't know if this is necessarily going to make the game much easier. I don't know if it's actually going to help me kill Jason. I've never gotten very far. All I remember about this game is it was very strange that there are zombies. Why are there zombies in a game about one lone murderer? That's always been perplexing. And boy, they did not give me any time. So the first thing you have to do is you have to defeat a certain number of zombies in order to get the lighter. We're going to pause real quick and see the fastest path to the lake is going to be going south which we have to do because there is a counselor in the cabin. Thankfully, it is not Chrissy, so we may just let them die. I know it sounds heartless, but frankly, it's it's one of those things where we need to prioritize getting the main character that we're using right now equipped as best we can. And if that means someone has to die, someone has to die. All right, so we are facing south. Let's go this way. Whoop. We're also looking for the knife. Got it. 
and then we need to find a key, and there is a key on this path that we'll find just before we take the fork going towards the lake. So anytime we get near there, we'll start ju jumping up in the air. There it is, that easy. Head in. All right, now we need to go to the, the cabin on the northern side of this ring. That's kind of in between the two smaller cabins, that larger one there. So we're gonna go left. One of the things they do recommend strongly when you're playing this game is once you have certain items, like the key and the knife, don't jump. The reason for that is if you actually have a knife and a key already and you accidentally pick the other one up, if you happen to uncover one while you're walking around, you can actually take it and it is a one-time pickup. So if you're trying to keep as many counselors alive as possible by spreading the wealth and getting all their items, you're better off not picking up additional items, because once they're gone, they're gone for good. I think I just walked in a massive circle talking. All right, let's go back this way and see where we're at. Oh yeah, I went right past it. So it's not this one, it's the next cabin. Oh Lord, who's dying now? Okay, that's also not Chrissy. We're gonna prioritize the two counselors that are the best. All right, so we need to go in here. There is a note somewhere in the cabin. You find it by walking in a particular direction, pressing up, and a note will usually appear. I don't see it. All right, we lit the fire in the cabin. What that does is it keeps anyone inside the cabin safe from Jason, I believe, is what that's supposed to do. Not 100% on that. Also not sure where that note is. Not seeing it. Maybe out here? Aha! All right, so I think we gotta take it go into the woods. All right, that's the one we want. So let's go ahead and leave the cabin. And then we need to go to the woods, which is to our, let's see, we're facing the cabin left, I think. So we'll find out in a second. Yep, that's it. All right. Go out of the woods. Pause for a second. Next, what we need to do is we need to follow the following path. Once we enter the woods, we need to go to the right and up, and that'll take us to a cabin. Up. Up. And then we go up again. All right, we're in the cabin. Now, what they do say in the instructions, I have no idea if, why this is the case. You need to leave, then go back in. We got inside the cabin. Uh, there is another note somewhere in here. I don't know where. We'll search the whole area. No, no. There it is. All right, take the note. Fire will damage Jason the most. All right, so that's what we needed. We're gonna go ahead and leave the cabin. And then what we wanna do is we want to go, let's see, the notes say, go to the right, down, right, and down. Oh, oh I missed. That's right, we'll go right. That medicine may be gone for good, unfortunately. That's one of those things you don't want to jump around a bunch. We do want to go back to the cabin, which means going to the right. If I'm not mistaken, I am right. And then there should be a torch somewhere in here now. Oh, turn, turn. Anything there? No. Maybe back where the note was. Ah, there it is. All right, so this is the best weapon for fighting Jason. So in theory, we should be able to take on Jason as we need now. Uh, where was the council that was in danger? Oof. We'll try to get to him in time. I can't make that promise, though. We're facing the cabin. We want to go left to get back to where we were, or where, where the, the counselor is, rather. Oh, oh, all right. Don't go in there. I want to go this way. And, all right, facing that, we want to go left. All right, so we're going in the right direction. Oh, medicine. Take that. And this is not the right cabin. We can't stop here. We got to go, 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 go. We're going to save you. All right, we saved her. She took a lot of damage in the trade, though. So if you go into a cabin and you see Jason's life bar, that means that Jason is inside the cabin. 
there are two different places you can encounter Jason. You can encounter him inside of cabins, or you can encounter him out along one of the paths circling the camp. It is easier to fight Jason on one of those paths, however. If you get to the cabin in time and go inside, you will encounter him inside and you have to fight him there. We've already gone inside, so let's see if we can't track him down. Not seeing you anywhere. At the door? No? Alright, what did I miss? There he is! Alright. Whoop! And whoop! Throw, throw, throw! Whoop! Whoop! Oh, he hits hard. Dodge. So in order to dodge a hit, you have to press down on the D-pad and in a direction. Oh, look at that. That was fairly easy. All right, we won for now. Let's uh, move on. I didn't see a fireplace we could light. Our next objective would be to go to any and all cabins that we can find around the world, around the, the game world, and light any and all fireplaces inside. Jason is here. All right, we're going to fight him again. Nope. Wait, there's another bend? All right, I don't know where... Ah, there we go. I don't know if it chases him off if you're already inside the cabin. Oh, and he's got a knife now. Wow! Oh, a double swing. Dodge. Woo! He tried to trick me, and I got him. You win for now. Now, one of the things that I've always found interesting about the uh, Friday the 13th game, and I, I, I guess it's similar in this vein to Jaws, is that the, the difficulty that everyone attributes to the game gives it kind of a legendary status. And I don't know if it's necessarily earned in the case of Jaws. Jaws, I think it's, it's actually very easy, as long as you understand you have to go back and forth between the docks to build up a power level. And you do that by trading in the conch shells that you pick up. Those aren't just for points, they're actually for building up a power meter for your character in that game. That one I always thought was strange that people found it so difficult because once I figured it out, I found the game so easy that I actually played on this channel the entirety of the game after finishing a two hour long drinking game for Shadowgate. And I had no problem beating it. Uh, in fact, I think I did in about 15 or 20 minutes. That one is a very easy game. I think there are other games that do warrant the uh, notoriety of being terribly difficult. All right, we're going to go oh, up and around the circle to light any cabins here. There's a note here. I'll just leave it. What I want to do is I want to get out. It's important to note that Jason can actually become far more difficult. Oh, I'm right there. Are right, we gonna go fight uh, on second and third day encounters? Oh, man. Brutal. All right, so we saved the kids. I don't know why there's only 15 of them left. That's strange. We didn't have an encounter trying to save the kids. All right, well, anyway, let's go find Jason and fight him. There he is. Whoa! Whoa! <laughs> right off the rip. Got a couple of good wax in him. Oh. Mm. Oh. Oh. Not too bad. This is actually fairly easy. Got him. 
All right. You win for now. Let's go. Kids, you're going to be all right. Daddy loves you. I'm <laughs> not their parent. Uh, yeah, let's go this way. Gotcha. Oh, didn't get you. Uh, I really don't like being on the lake. The lake is kind of dangerous. Can I? No. I think the only way you can heal is by going into one of the cabins where you have the menu pop up. Like this one. So, oh, no, 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 no. All right, cure. No, that didn't work. Cure. All right, I guess I can't. Oh, I bet I know what it is. I think you have to yeah, you give it to one of the other counselors. So, interesting. My health bar is going to be what my health bar is no matter what I do. In fact, let's go ahead and change to Chrissy and try to give her some equipment because again, she is the other best character in the game. They both have pretty good stats across the board. Everyone else has one stat that they're actually really good at and three that they're bad at. It involves jumping, running, damage, and rowing ability. And I believe George is good at everything except for jumping. I might be wrong on that. And Chrissy's good at everything except for strength. So she's not as good of a starting character as the other one, whose name is escaping me, Mark. But if you have to choose one more counselor that you use, she's not a bad alternative. And just like... Mark, you have to get a lighter in order to pick up any of the other items. Now that we have the lighter, we can go back this way and find a knife somewhere. There it is. Now we can go get the key and uh, find the map. Oh. Oh. I don't think there's any benefit to grabbing... Oh. Or killing any more zombies than you absolutely have to as part of advancing the weapon progression. There's medicine somewhere around here. Should be. May have already picked it up, frankly. All right, so we are near the medicine somewhere in here. Ah, crap. Well, if I can't find it here, we'll search another spot. There it is. I knew it was here. And we are not at the right cabin to begin our progress towards her gaining a torch. Here we go. So I think the note stays in the same spot. It does. Go ahead and take the note. Go into the woods. Yep, thank you. Go back out. All right, so I want to go back to my left. All right? Yes. Go into the woods. And then we want her to go right. Oh! Oh boy. Keep going, keep going, keep going, keep going. Up, up. All right. We'll back out, go back in the way that the instructions say. We have our entry. We want to grab the note. It tells us firewall damage. Jason the most. Okay. We're going to leave. Go right. A down, right. Oh, stupid wolf. Down. All right, and then we want to go back to our... Let's see if the road is facing that way. Right. We want to go to the right, I think. So I'll find out in a second. Am I in the right spot? I am. Go inside. And then I think it was just turning around and trying to exit, and we saw the torch. There it is. All right. Take the torch. So now Chrissy and Mark are both armed with the torch. That means we have two different people that can help do some serious damage to Jason. Facing the cabin, I'll get to it faster by going to the right. I think I've gone to the right spot. Let's double check. Yes. Cabin at the lake is where all the kids are located, so... All right, just go. Go, go, go. Stupid animals. 
I don't think he can throw up or down. <gasps> I didn't know he could do that. Interesting. Dodge. A dodge. I might be able to beat him here. Dodge. As long as I don't get greedy. Hup. I got him. I don't know if that means he's done. Watch out, Jason's still alive and stronger than before. Oh, goody. Okay. So, Mark... And Chrissy both got their life back. Very cool. All right. In fact, everyone got their life back. I don't know what that means about the kids. It looks like the kids are still down to 15. I don't know if that is how many were supposed to be alive or not. I thought it was like 50. We could try to build up some of the other characters, but honestly, you're really better off just focusing on Mark and, and Chrissy and keeping them alive. Now, there is some stuff that you can do additionally to enhance your characters. You can actually go to the cave and the cave has the head of Jason Voorhees' mom, and you can try to fight her, and if you defeat her on certain days, you get certain rewards. One of the ones that you get on the second day, which is the day we're on now, is a sweater, and the sweater will actually increase your health, if I'm not mistaken, but I don't know if that's really worth trying because it involves lighting the fireplace at every single cabin in the game. I don't know if we're actually gonna be able to do that. We can try. All right, so we're facing... We want to go this way. Oh, my God. I don't even have time. I gotta go around the other way. All right, so we're coming up the street. I want to go left. Sorry, there is a logic to the way that you travel on these streets, which is why I'm stopping whenever I get to the next area, which is if the street is facing down that you came off of, if you turn left, you will go, like... For example, the street I was just on, turning left will make you go, or going to the left will make you go down on that inner circle. Turning right would make you go up on the inner circle. So you have to kind of pay attention to where the, the facing of a particular building or street is in order to know which way you're going to go. It can be a little confusing. All right, we're here. You're safe, and I have to fight Jason again. He's going to be tougher. I can figure out where he is. Oh! 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 Oh, he is brutal! Okay, I don't want to fight him in cabins anymore. I'm done. Oh, no! <laughs> he wasn't done. All right, well, Chris, you're up. If we can fight him outside of a cabin, we want to do it there instead. Because in theory, if you fight the, the person on the street, it's an easier fight. There is also a set path that Jason will follow. And you can encounter him on the, the game map by going into that path. He actually follows one of two different pre uh, predetermined paths that will load when you start a new game. Okay, okay, fine. Get out of here. It's not a guarantee that you'll ever actually run into him before he gets to the necessary cabin, but we'll hang out outside and see if we can't catch him. Come on, I know you're here. But apparently the game didn't want me to fight him. Whatever. Move it on. Will he still be in there? No, he won't. Hmm. I want to see if I can just light the fire in here. Nope. Alright, let me go back out. I 
not 100 percent certain yet the the fires have to be relit every single day i think they do and that kind of makes sense a fire is going to burn out if no one's tending it there's also a bonus if you defeat a certain number of zombies in the overworld like they uh, they give you a certain item all right so I don't see a fireplace 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 nothing all right so we're at that cabin let's go to the left Hey, what up, dude? Got a fireplace in here? Nothing. Nothing. Small cabins, very easy to check quickly. Alright, who's in trouble now? Uh-oh. Oh, get back out. That wasn't the way I was hoping it would take me. So we're facing the ones uh, we want to go to the right. You should always be careful when you're on the map jumping because you'll expose items like that. And again, if you do that by accident, you might end up picking it up and then another character who doesn't have a better option will lose out on the ability to get that. Time Jason wants to show up somewhere where I can fight him. I'm not fighting him inside. The machete, which is what just appeared on the screen uh, up above my head, is actually a worse item than the torch, so you don't want to pick that up. No, nope, couldn't get him. All right, well, it's just down to two counselors, and we already know where the other one is. He's up in the inner circle. I think we have to fight Jason! <laughs> oh, yeah, this actually ain't too bad. Oh, I can do this. I can do this! I just don't want to pick up the medicine until I burn through the one I have. And I did anyway. Okay. <laughs> it's... Ah, damn it. Oh. I got one more chance. He's clinging to me. Oh, that's not fair. That was brutal. I think what they want you to do is they want you to trade blows with them and see if you can't uh, just outlast them. All right, so we're down to our last counselor because I was just kind of giving up on all the others. As you can see, there is a huge difference in how fast he moves compared to uh, Mark or Chrissy, who have those, uh, I guess, cross-country style leggings, legs, whatever. All right, so there is a key south on the outer ring that we could probably grab. I think that one is available still. If not, we might have to do a little hustling to get to the next one. Frankly, because we're the last counselor alive, that means that we are probably going to have to... Where's the cabin? Yeah, this way. Save the kids. That is his next target. Which means we may be screwed. Oh, okay. He had a little too much trail mix this morning. He's, he's a little logy. Hey. I guess technically he can jump over zombies if he wants, but uh, where are we? Oh, we went way past the key. All right, we got to jump some more up here. See if it's in this area somewhere. Nope, that's the knife, but we'll take it anyway because we're at the last character. There's no reason to save it. Nothing. 
So that key is gone. We'll have to go around the circle, probably to the northern side of the map to get the next key. Oh, and the kids are in trouble. I don't know what happens if you let the kids die. I honestly don't know. I also don't know why, if there was someone murdering kids around the camp, that parents actually took their kids to this camp, because it looks like the meter went back up after <laughs> the initial level. What are you guys doing? Camp should be closed. Go home. <laughs> That's funny. Oh. I don't need the knife, but I do need a key. There should be a key somewhere up here. There it is. All right, so we want to go back to the uh, cabin around the lake. We got to go back this way. I really don't know what's about to happen here. Maybe it's just all the kids that just died there are dead and that's it. Yep, that's it. And just five kids died. Just five kids. I mean, come on. Bunch of cowards. Alright, so I want to get to the next cabin. Right here. I want to get to the note. Read the note. Leave. You would think the counselors would just tell each other, hey, 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 come here, come here. Just go to the woods. Just go to the woods. Instead of telling each other, no, there's an important note you need to go to this cabin and pick up in order to go to the woods. <laughs> oh, we got the note. All right, now you can go to the woods. Ow, I couldn't hit him in time. He jumped me. Okay, don't fight him. He's not, he's too tough. Gotcha. Ow. Oh, these zombies. All right, up, up. Leave. Back in. Doors open. Got the note. Okay. Leave. And then we want to go right. Huh! Oh, look at that dodge. I think I already had the medicine, but we'll take it again. Down. Right. Jump down and then we want to go facing that way so to the right all right we have our chance at fighting jason back with our last counselor because there's the torch is this going to be enough to save my life probably not I don't even know how to heal. No, oh, no, we don't want to do that. Oh, stop it. Oh, why are they so brutal? Okay, so you can pick up more than one medicine bottle. Interesting. I didn't know you could do that. And we want to leave here. Oh. So the machete, if I'm not mistaken, appears every time you kill 60 zombies. So if you don't want to follow the instructions to getting the torch, you can just do that and get a much less powerful weapon. The rank of power for weapons that you can get in this game goes rocks are the worst, obviously. Uh, if you go get a knife, which is fairly easy, that does slightly more damage, then the machete... Then there is an axe that Jason uses. You can get that. The torch becomes the second most powerful weapon in the game after that. And then the most powerful weapon, which is the most difficult to obtain, is a pitchfork. And the pitchfork will actually pierce enemies if you throw it, which I guess is the only way you can attack enemies in this game. <laughs> All right, come on. Go, 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 go. Yeah. Wow, Jason! 
He just kind of bulldozed me. Ah, there's no jumping. And I'm dead. <laughs> ah! Oh, no, I have medicine. I have medicine. I'm not dead. I'm only slightly dead. Can I use this? No, it doesn't let me do it. So we just got to go fight Jason somewhere. There he is. Oh, 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 I didn't dodge fast enough. And then he got me the second time. All right, that's game. <laughs> All right, so the instructions kind of helped me make some progress, but ultimately Jason is really tough on the second day. And apparently he just gets harder the further you get in the game. There are three days that you have to go through in order to beat Jason. The first time you face him on each day, he's just fighting with his hands. Then he'll fight with his machete. Uh, and I believe the axe is the third thing that he can get. So they he does progressively more damage the longer in the day you go. And then each additional day into the game that you play, his tactics become a little bit more involved, more uh, unique. So it actually becomes more difficult to dodge his hits on successive days if you do manage to make it through the first day. And that is part of the reason why this is one of the most difficult games on the NES is because those tactics are very difficult to adjust to even if you know they're coming. You just, you gotta have like a, a twitch to it. You know, you, he attacks, just kind of dodge twice out of reflex. Um, I think that's gonna be enough of a look. I don't know if I was gonna be able to make any more progress on the second day. Uh, it is very difficult to actually do enough damage on him those second and third days to actually make any progress without dying because you got to pick up medicine and medicine just like the knives and the keys are a one-time only pickup on the map if you pick up medicine it's gone from there forever there are some locations in the woods and in the uh, cave that you can pick up medicine but once you acquire those they're gone as well there is no respawning items as far as i know in this game so, final thoughts on Friday the 13th, on Friday the 13th, based on Friday the 13th. It lives up to its hype as being a very difficult game, mainly because of the actual tactics that Jason employs versus the mechanics once you have someone or something explaining exactly what to do. I think a lot of the, the mystique and challenge of the game was literally just figuring out how to actually do enough damage to Jason to survive to the next day and the next day. And if you don't have anything better than a knife or a machete, you probably are going to get trucked every single time you see him. Uh, dodging, at least early on, seems very simple because his attacks aren't that fast, at least on the first day. Once you got to the second day, that's a little bit of a different story. And from what I heard, fighting on the uh, side-scrolling uh, dirt trails going around the camp was supposed to be easier. I'm going to have to hard disagree on that. I thought it was much easier doing it inside the cabin. Even if I didn't actually beat him a single time during the second day of the game. I think it was just a matter of I need to be a little bit quicker dodging that second attack if he's doing like a one-two combo. That wasn't actually all that bad. Um, I think that would just be if I played it a second or third or fourth time, maybe I'd finally get the timing down and it wouldn't be that much uh, trouble. Saving the lesser counselors, I, that sounds horrible to say, but uh, that aren't Mark or Chrissy kind of feels like a waste of time unless you're absolutely struggling to keep uh, ahead of Jason in terms of damage or health. Hey, you're better off just letting them die. The kids, on the other hand, I don't know what happens if all of them die. If all of them die, maybe it's game over automatically. So they have to be saved and the counselors don't necessarily. You want to make sure you protect your two leaders, your Mark and Chrissy. The other four, if they happen to be on the path that you're walking, yeah, maybe save them. But I tried to go to the next kind of logical step of the game, which involves you walking to all of the cabins on the map and lighting the fireplace inside of them. The reason for that is once you light all six of them, you get a flashlight. The flashlight is necessary to see inside the cave. The cave is where you find the head of Jason Voorhees' mother. And again, 
Fighting her, while optional, gives you a couple of additional items. On the second day, most notably, you get the sweater, which improves your health for that particular character. And I believe on the third day, if you actually manage to beat her, you get the pitchfork, which is the best weapon in the game. It's much easier to get the torch and get it very quickly, so it's you're better off focusing on that first. Then, if you have time between trying to save counselors and kids, going around the camp and lighting all the other fireplaces. That is kind of a secondary thing. The other, uh, the, the primary goal is, of course, staying alive and keeping all the other counselors and kids alive if you can. It's not as hard as I thought it would be. And in memory, I knew I had a hard time doing it, but I really didn't understand what I was doing. Having a clear through line to explain what I had to do actually I think takes away some of that mystique, but in a good way. It actually makes it so that the game coming into it, and I was expecting to be kind of annoyed or frustrated with it, wasn't that bad. So I guess in final thoughts, this is a better game than I remember it being. I still think they might have made Jason a little too tough on the second day, and I can't imagine how bad it is on the third day. Maybe just tone the speed down just a tiny bit. But even then, that may just be something where if I had come back to it a second time and, and started learning his tactics when he attacks with the machete or his fist, I wouldn't have had that hard a time beating him on that second day. And then it literally is just waiting out his next appearance on the map, either on the uh, in one of the cabins or out on the dirt trails going around the camp. I think this is actually a decent game. It is difficult against Jason. But I think tr trying to penetrate the the cycle of what you need to do to upgrade your character and make them better, that's the trick. Because they, you don't know where the items are unless, and I, I'll be up front, I'll even put it on the screen here. I had a map showing me where every single item was in the main camp overworld. I could have pulled up one for the, the woods as well as the cave as well. I didn't think those were going to be as necessary because I uh, dedicated myself to just kidding out Mark and Chrissy. And if I had to use another counselor, so be it. I'd just try to find whatever else was left in the game world. But items are, are static. They appear in one spot every single time you play the game. And you can only pick them up one time from that spot. So I knew I was going to have this character pick up these items, this character pick up these items, and anything else that was left over, the other counselors would just fight for them if they had to, if I had to use them. So yeah, this is a, I think it's a fun game. There is an interesting gimmick here. Saving counselors, saving kids, trying to defeat Jason, who is, you know, a seemingly unstoppable machine which is a recurring gimmick in uh, horror movies, of course, is that, you know, uh, Mike Myers is an unstoppable, emotionless, remorseless killing machine. So is Jason. Jaws is an unstoppable, emotionless killing machine, basically. Uh, that was a popular refrain for monster movies or, or slasher movies going all the way back to the 70s and maybe even earlier. Well, I would say it's the 70s that that really started because you're talking Texas Chainsaw Massacre. You had Leatherface who didn't have any emotions because his face was literally obscured by a mask. And then, you know, Halloween and Friday the 13th and Jaws and so on. Uh, uh, Nightmare on Elm Street doesn't really count because they made uh, Freddy Krueger very much a character. You know, he talks, he has emotions. They're all, you know, angry or, or silly, but he has emotions when he's doing it. Uh, going as far forward as uh, Scream, you have, you know, an emotionless killer up until the mask comes off and you find out who is actually doing it. But this is just one in a long line of types of slasher flicks involving that kind of killer. Uh, My Bloody Valentine would be another one. Uh, mask wearing killer can't tell what his emotions are and he can't seemingly be stopped. But anyway, that's uh, enough rambling on. I enjoyed my time with the game. Maybe we'll try it again in a future Friday the 13th uh, day of the year. This one just happened to line up perfectly and I'll have someone else come in and I'll try to guide them in defeating Jason with probably similar results where we just can't seemingly penetrate that second day. It's just too difficult. That's going to do it for our look at Friday the 13th, the video game based on Friday the 13th, the movie on Friday the 13th of the day. As always, I do appreciate each of you watching, and I will see you next time.